Hello everyone and thanks for stopping by my channel. I am Serge T. In this video I'll be talking about WWE Backlash for May the 4th, 2024. Now tonight, four championships are up for grabs. And as Cole says, this is Backlash. And we hear the familiar start of KO's music, his entrance theme, and I guess we're going to start off with the tag team match between KO, Randy Orton, versus The Bloodline. And the crowd sings along with Randy's theme as he comes out. Okay, sure, must sound great to be there, but I would rather they not, but that's their choice. What are you going to do? We want Roman, chance our starting even before the bell rings and even the action starts before the bell rings as well and gm aldis comes out and declares this match a street fight and why not as this is perfect because none of these four men are can be controlled now the bloodline they're being dominated you know obliterated and destroyed and at one point ko hits a frog splash through Tama, through Tama Tonga, not through the table, but it's, you know, just enough. I believe, oh, sh what am I talking about? He did put him through that table. And then, um, Solo, and Solo, uh, Samoan drops Orton through a table inside the ring. I mean, I don't know how I could forget that. I got it in my notes, and I'm still saying it wrong. Yes, Tamatanga got put through a damn table. And then there's a point where he's getting whipped with a kendo stick, and then you see the, the, the line of, you know, because with, with, you know when you get hit with that thing, you get those slits all around him, and then they pinch your skin when they hit you. That's why it hurts. I don't think it hurts when you hit him with it. It's just that part. That's what hurts. You know what I'm saying? Now... Here, they even make mention of Tamatanga's uh, prior history with uh, New Japan. They say he's a former seven-time champ and I believe a four-time never-open weight champion in New, in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And he's a member of the Bullet Club. They even bring that up that he was a member. And I mean, Tonga is legit and he's giving a legit ass-whooping to KO with a kendo stick. I believe they turned it around on them or it's like, you know what I mean? Like it was used quite heavily in this uh, match and they all got their licks in when it comes to the kendo stick. But still, Owen still has some fight and even reverses a whip into a table set up for him in the corner and then he sends Solo into the table. So Leon France was asking for tables. They got him. And those were used quite heavily also in this match. Now, I'm asking myself, why is the crowd chanting, thank you, Tonga, when they're booing him before? And they're all over, all about KO. But then, you know, we see Orton's back in the ring and he takes it to the MFT. I still don't know what the fuck that means, but whatever. And he hits a vintage... Randy Orton with the draping DDT and hits the RKO, but Solo makes the save. I thought, is this match going to be over? He hit it so smoothly and so cleanly, right? The draping DDT he hits that and then starts pounding the ground, right? Setting up for the RKO. He hits it. I'm going, I, I know it's not going to be over that quickly, but at, the, at that point, I'm thinking, are we gonna, is it going to be over that quick? Now, Inside the ring, and we have chairs set up, and Tama Tonga tries to put KO through them. But KO reverses and hits a brain buster instead. And just as he's about to, you know, looking like he's going to, you know, put Tama Tonga and the bloodline as a whole away, the count is broken up by Tonga's own brother, Tonga Loa. Who as together they were known as the Gorillas of Destiny in um, New Japan, and they were a multi-time tag team champion, dominant team. And does this mean that he's there permanently, or just a, an appearance? We know that Jacob Fatu is on his way. 
and believe, I believe he's there already, but he's just they're just not gonna you know pull the trigger yet and when to debut him. Could even be Monday night after uh, what do you call it? I mean, what brand are they on now? But uh, whatever brand that the Bloodline's on, you might see him debut following Backlash. Now, Tangaloa puts uh, down Orton with a steel step, and then as Owens peeks his head through the ropes, he turns around and nails uh, KO with it as well. And Solo delivers a Yurinagi to KO through a steel chair. That looked like it hurt. I mean, I felt it. And he connects with a Samoan spike to win this match. And, you know, like I said, I like um, how Cole says Samoan warfare, warfare tonight. He says Samoan warfare tonight. And then Graves says destiny. As it alludes to the Gorillas of Destiny, the tag team, like I said, of Tama Tonga and Tangaloa, Tangaloa in uh, New Japan. So... That right there is signs that uh, Triple H is in charge. Vince McMahon wouldn't allow that. So for those of you who are doubting or even wondering, is McMahon still in the weeds, if you will? Oh, excuse me, BKM. You know, you know, I don't want to say his name. You know, he's Voldemort, right? Um, WWE and wrestling in general. And uh, see, Triple H would only allow this, not him. You know. Triple H doesn't believe that this is only his sandbox and you know WWE sandbox. They're gonna let other some other people play in the sandbox too. I don't know. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, it's tippy time as lovely Tiffany Stratton makes her way to the ring, and she makes she has only been at this for two and a half years, which blows my mind because she is so good. And of course, now I'm alluding to the triple threat match for the women's. WWE Women's Championship. N A O M I spells the name of the lovely Naomi, and she comes out, and the crowd is vibing to her music. I loved how they were doing. They, they were like they had the, the phones up, the lights out, and doing this, doing this, like like it looked like it was a rave, like it looks like it was a damn club that you go to. You know, like I said, they're moving around, and France really knows how to have a good time. This whole evening, I would love to have been there just to feel the the building shake and the, and just the vibes. You know, like when you have all these people trying, you feel something like coming over you, like some kind of a tremor, some kind of a, like a, it's like a wind hits you. It's like that. It just it has that feeling. It goes right through you, and it, it's 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 amazing. It's fun to say. I've been to a lot of concerts. I've been to, you know, stuff like that, and it's just the same type of vibe. But I think WWE probably even has. It, you know, it has it licked when it comes to that type of a feel. I don't think even concerts or anything that has anything to do has comes close to a, a, a WWE event, especially when you have that many people in there. Now, the champ Bailey walks the rampway to the ring, and the crowd is digging her, as I do. Love Bailey. The match begins, and these ladies trade arm drags and roll ups as the crowd stays rowdy and chanting all evening thus far. What a match that even spills outside of the ring, but Tiffy's ego gets her in trouble as she is on the receiving end of a suicide dive by Bailey. But Naomi gets back into it and connects with that DDT or whatever it is as she drives Tiffany Stratton into the you know outside apron. And and that's very brutal, man, but I love how it's, she's safe. And she's gonna definitely protect Tiffany. Is Naomi because she's a pro and she's been at it for some time. And um, and she even did a backflip onto Bailey onto into the uh, barricade earlier. Like I don't, I don't know, it was Bailey. No, it was it was Naomi. But she did that thing. That's like she does in the ring, and then she she, she splashes person people in the corner. She did that against the ramp. I mean, not the ramp, but the barricade. And I gotta say, um, Stratton, you know, she just fits this women's division. And in this match, she is dominating as she puts Naomi and Bailey first into the commentary table for Naomi and Bailey into the French announcer's desk. Now, Naomi looked to win this, but even after delivering a step up in Zaguri and a roll up, Bailey reverses it and rolls up Naomi to win the match and successfully defends her title. Now, since Naomi ate the pin, Stratton should 
still get a sh shot since she wasn't pinned. Or at least get another shot. That's how usually it works, right? It's like someone who's not pinned in a multi-person match, that person will still get a shot because they can say, well, I wasn't pinned. I didn't lose. And I like how they do this because this does set up a match between those two, between Bailey and um, Stratton because Naomi, she had her shot before. Even though it was a fucked finish, but she still, you know, she had that and then she has this one. She was pinned. So Naomi's got to go to the back focus or focus on another feud or something like that and then she'll get her shot in the future. But I'm down with uh, Tiffany Stratton and Bailey in the future. Um, you know, so we'll see. Now, as Jay prepares for his World Heavyweight title match, Solo and his bloodline, they walk by. Each and every one of them and eye him. I thought they were going to get into it, but they didn't. And then Heyman does the same, but it's with sympathy and an almost I'm sorry for this look. You know, it's like a look of, I'm sorry, Jay. You know, like, I could definitely see Heyman switching sides when Roman comes back and Roman's going to be the baby face in the bloodline. I mean, his bloodline is going to be babyface with the Usos and with Paul Heyman. Now, like I said, Tonga Loa kind of puts a uh, kind of puts a like a, a monkey wrench in the system, you know, that stuff, and you know, kind of throws a, 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 a you know, a, what do you call it? What do you call that? A stumbling block there because we, no one expected him to be here. You, you thought it was going to be Jacob Fatu. Jacob Fatu might be on the on the side with Roman. Who knows? And he has yet to make his debut. So we'll see what happens with his future and what he, how he fits into the bloodline, the whole bloodline story. Now, Jay hits the arena. It's insane how over Jay is. And seeing those fireflies, I'll call them fireflies because, you know, that's what people call it when people do it for Bray. But when they have their phones up, lights on and stuff, and it's going up and down and the crowd is going off, you know, the way they're going off is just it's out of this world. Like... This is probably one of the most insane crowds that I've ever seen ever in the history of pay-per-views, PLEs. You know what I mean? And you just want to be there to feel that. It looked great, you know? And people want to say that he's not world championship material. I mean, get over yourselves, okay? I know you're looking at Roman, you're looking at Randy, you're looking at John Cena, and you're looking at Brock and all these guys who, they're the world champions. That's the model right there. But look at Jay and how over he is. He definitely would have been put in um, catering, or he would have been knocked down a bunch of a bunch of notches by 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 uh, VKM. I don't want to say his name, by him when he was in charge, because he's getting over on his own. You know, Jay is right organically, and you're saying that he's not world champion, but why? Because he used to be a tag team. Oh, he's not. You know, 250 pounds or 280 pounds, 300 pounds. He's not six foot nine, or you know, he's not a monster, a beast. Uh, you know. In the vein of the people that I said earlier, it's like that doesn't only make world champions. Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, right? You know, guys who were world champion and nobody would have put them as a you know, you know as a world champion. You know, I don't I don't get people. I really don't. And Jay Uso, if he would have won today, you know, if he would have walked out as a champion. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have minded. It would have been perfect. Now, it looks like JD didn't listen to Priest and his marching orders. Do not come out to this match. He doesn't need the Judgment Day's help. He said that time and again. And still, this crowd is rocking the arena, and even the competitors can't deny reacting to it as well. Like I even saw Jay crack a smile, as if to look at Priest and go, "Can you believe this?" But then he goes back to being serious, you know, his, you know, he had to get back into character. This what it looked like to me. But back to business and Jay hits a spear but couldn't keep Priest down. Baylor com Balor comes out and eats a super kick and Priest, unbeknownst to Balor's presence, hits a south of heaven but Jay doesn't stay down for the three count. Three super kicks, rocks Priest and sends him into the corner, sets him up for a spear and sets to deliver the splash but Priest is saved by JD, who places the champ's foot on the ropes. And this leads to a second turnbuckle. He's on the second turnbuckle, and the South of Heaven is delivered by Priest. And he puts Jay away, and Priest retains the world title. So I guess he needed the Judgment Day's assistance after all. 
And even after the bell, he gets into it with JD and Finn. You know, they do that post attack. And then he's just like picking them up, throwing them back on. What are you doing? And I'm just like going, what is up with Priest? Like, is he getting too power hungry? Like, even if something that makes sense. And that makes sense for the Judgment Day. They do that. But yet, he's so blinded by power that it's like, I'm going to, whatever I say goes. And I don't want you guys to do that. You know, they've had enough or something like, you know what I mean? So it's just like, it's gonna become, there's going to come a time where... It's going to come to a head between Judgment Day. And uh, do I want to see them break up? Not really, because they're very strong together. They're one of the best uh, factions in pro wrestling right now. Really, really good from the rocky start with Edge to now where they're at. You know. Now, in the ring, we see the uh, French announcer spouting stuff in the ring. You know, not knowing what he's saying, of course, because I'm not French. And then it's roughly translated by Cole... Is that Backlash tonight is the largest gate of any arena show in WWE history? And that's pretty damn, that's pretty impressive. Um, you know, I don't know. Did they, I thought they were going to show like a graphic of the of the attendance record? Because I know at SmackDown, the same arena, eleven thousand something like that. So it's about, about about the same. No, but regardless, that's a big crowd. And thanks, you know, congratulations to WWE hitting records left and right and. It's, they deserve it. They've been working their asses off. With, with, ever since the TKO uh, acquisition and the changes that have been made, namely a, a, a person that will not be mentioned is out. They're all, they're cooking on, you know, they're hitting on all cylinders, man. They're, they're just, you know, so it's just like WWE is just moving forward and you know, some of these other companies are being way left way behind in their rearview mirror. There's nothing they can do about it. You want to be number two? Fine. You can't be number one. WWE is always going to have that locked up. Always. Now, the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match is upon us. And Damage Control look to successfully defend their titles against the impossible in Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. Now, it's brought up by Cole that Belair is the only only the third woman after Kelly Kelly and Becky Lynch to be the first pick in the WWE draft and of course the first black woman to achieve this as well now Jade looking good and she and Bianca have dominated this match and are dealing just the right amount of punishment to keep the champs at bay but damage control do take control back you know, back and forth but they are, they're all getting their shit in they're all doing their thing and stuff like that. Now, who says Cargill is all show and no go? Man, she did a springboard high cross body from the top rope. And then she goes for a double clothesline. Now, she hits Kairi saying, Asuka ducks underneath. But then, no worries. Because then she connects with a pump kick and knocks Asuka on her butt. Now, she does some Sting-esque splashes in the corner and delivers a two-handed choke bomb to Kyrie, but Asuka breaks it up. Poor Kyrie, she's on the receiving end of a lot of her high-impact offense, you know, of Jade's. And that girl, as small as she is, is one tough, you know, cookie. She really, really does take it, and she does give it back too. So, you know, she's tough, and that's why I love her. Aside from the fact that she's a beautiful girl, you know, some of that. But anyway, let's move on. Jade delivers a press slam to Kyrie Sane. You know, so so delivery on it, but I won't hold it against her. She has been on point most of the match. Sometimes it's it's, it's in also it comes with the person that maybe a miscue and the person didn't, you know, go with the, the move. But you know, like I said, no 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 nothing against her. She's been on point, like I said, the most of the match. Now Kyrie at one point messed up and she didn't realize that she wasn't the legal competitor. And that's neither here nor there. You know, that happens. And then the Kabuki Warriors eventually get each woman in arm bars. But the powerful double team, but the powerful duo of Belair and Cargill power their way out of it. They just say, pick them up, drop them. That's all they need to do. They're the ones that have the power, the strength, and, the out, and, the, and they're like, you know, bigger than uh, their competitors, bigger than the, um, the champs. Now, Jade seemed gassed out at this point. You can see it. But both she and Bianca do hit very uh, well-done finisher. Uh, it's a very well-done finisher that they did together. 
but then Kyrie kicks out. Now Jay saves the day as the Kubica Warriors hit their insane elbow combo. And what a sequence that follows. We see Jade muscle Kyrie up. She gets her up on her shoulders and then she ends up putting her in a position for Jaded. She hits it and then Bianca hits the KOD on Asuka, dropping her on, uh, on Asuka. No, oh, she does a K. What is that KO? Yeah, she does the KOD. She drops her on Kyrie and then. She pins Asuka to win the tag straps for her and Jay. They're both happy. They're both elated. You see the tears coming and all this emotion from Bianca. And then both Jade, Jade brings Bianca close in and then they have a big hug. And congrats, and congrats to these two beauties. You know, I love them both. I think they're amazing. And they totally really do... Um, Deserve this now. Like I said, with Jade, she kind of looked gassed, like she was really gasping for breath and kind of like that. And I'm just hoping that has nothing to do with her cardio because look at her; she looks like a cardio machine. But maybe it's because this is, it was quite a, a good amount of time in this match. And remember, when she was in AEW, she always had these squash matches. Don't know how long she wrestled. You know, if it was even for a long time, even more than five minutes. So I don't know if that's what it is. And if it is, she needs to work on that cardio. But but then again, like I said, she's getting better. She's also really putting together a good move set. So things that work for her. And that's what it's all about. She can't be, you know, we can't be thinking that she's going to be a technical wizard in a, a damn, uh, you know, bout machine. You know what I'm saying? Like someone that could just go. And keep going and keep going and still have, you know, reserves in the tank, if you will. You know, but congratulations to them both. They both deserve it. And of course, no surprise because, you know, Jade is hot right now. She won at WrestleMania. Right. She she entered the Royal Rumble. She, she was, you know, she did very well there, eliminating Nia Jax. eliminating um, Becky Lynch, among others. I think she went, I think, I don't forget who the other one is. But you know what I mean? And then she does WrestleMania. She wins. She gets the pin. And then she, she wins here. Bianca got the pin, but Jay still looks strong. So congratulations to them, like I said. And let's move on. And they announced the first round matches on Raw for the women when it comes to the Queen of the Ring. I, I was saying this in my last video. They hadn't mentioned the women, but you see all these men stepping forward, but not seeing the win. But they got them here. First matches that would be for Raw, that would be Shayna Baszler versus Zelina Vega, who of course is the defending champ, I mean the defending champ, but the defending Queen of the Ring. At that time it was known as Queen's Crown, but there you go. Lyra Valkyria versus Asuka. That's going to be a, oh my god, that's going to be a match. A banger, if you will. Now Io Sky versus Natalia. Now, who am I going to pick for those? I say Shayna. Lyra Valkyria, I hope they give it to her because this is her first match and she just made her debut being drafted over to Raw. So I hope she wins, but we'll see. Io Sky versus Natalia. Natalia pretty much puts people over now. She's really, really has not done anything. She's just basically there. So I see Io Sky winning, and because Io Sky is a former champion, she might want to use this as a way to launch her into the number one contendership. For Bailey's title. But then again, no, because she's on Raw now, right? Right, they're on Raw now, so don't know, so that won't happen. But then again, maybe. Well, but then, you know, I don't know. Becky, Becky's the champ on Raw. What was it? Now, the men will have Drew McIntyre versus Finn Balor, Kofi Kingston versus Rey Mysterio, and Ricochet versus Ilya Dragunov. Now I'm going to choose Drew McIntyre, Rey Mysterio, and then Ilya Dragunov. Ilya Dragunov cannot lose. This guy is a guy that I know Triple H is going to push. He's going to put him out there. And if you're not familiar with his work, I've been familiar with his work since NXT UK. Nobody hardly saw NXT UK because it was on the network. I watched it and I enjoyed every one of those people there. 
A lot of them are gone now, but some have been retained. And you see them kind of sprinkling in, not only on NXT, but on Raw and SmackDown now. With uh, Drew, with Blair Davenport on SmackDown, we got uh, Lyra Valkyria here. I used to know her as Aoife Valkyrie before, but now she's known as uh, Lyra Valkyria. And then, of course, Ilya Dragunov. His resume speaks for itself. He beat and, un and, and unseated... Uh, near 800, uh, over 800 plus day reign as NXT UK champion. That champion was Gunther, and he he's the one that beat him. And then he had a long uh, title reign himself. But uh, the last one, Gunther versus Sheamus. Holy shit! Does that have banger written all over it? Sheamus versus Gunther. I mean, these guys faced off, right, at WrestleMania for the um, Intercontinental title, right? Or, oh no, not that, but they did face off with that title. That's what people wanted. They wanted them to be at WrestleMania. Oh no. Wasn't it those, him, them, it was, it was Gunther, Sheamus, and Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania 39, right? For the Intercontinental title, right? Yeah. And then Gunther retained. But now it's one on one. But Gunther's going to win that. I love Sheamus, but Sheamus can afford to lose. He doesn't have much more to prove. Why would, what, what does he have left to prove? He's just there now to give us banger after banger after banger, right? And we love him. We're not going to care if he loses or not. You know, he's a made man, like I said with um, AJ Styles when it comes to his status and thing. Not that he can't do anything wrong either. But uh, that's looking good. And then SmackDown, uh, Corey Gray said that SmackDown, they're going to announce their matches. It might be announced on, on Raw, and then they're going to have the matches on SmackDown. Why would they announce the matches, and then, oh, they could do that. But it's kind of nice to have a have a, have a, a heads up and be like, oh, damn. You know, because then that's how you're going to get people to watch SmackDown. Oh, we're going to have these matchups. And, you know, so it would be like, oh, wow. Like, okay. You know, I'm going to watch SmackDown. I'm going to watch SmackDown anyways, because we know that we're going to have these matches. But, uh you know, that's going to look good, and I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to it on, um, tomorrow on uh, Raw. Now, I have to watch the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby to find out the news regarding WrestleMania. No thanks. You know, horse racing? Horses running around and like that. I mean, I think when, I'm, when I was there, a friend of mine was heavy into... Watching them betting on us, so that's how I watched. I'm like, oh yeah, it's cool, but it's like what the thing. But when you find out what the horses go through and all that stuff, it's kind of like it kind of turns you off, kind of you know. But uh, anyway, it's also announced uh, that May 25th we see the King and Queen of the Ring finals in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. So the finals will be set there. They're gonna do all the qualifying, the semis, or qualifying, quarterfinals, semifinals, right? However, finals, <laughs> and then we're gonna have the finals at, uh, you know, in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Now, the WWE Championship main event finally is here, and the phenomenal AJ Styles challenges WWE Champion Cody Rhodes. The Styles became WWE Champion at Backlash in 2016, remember that? He had a hot year that year. Started with the, uh, his debut at the Royal Rumble. And he is wearing ring gear, custom made to replicate when he beat Dusty Rhodes for the NWA World Title 21 years ago. And I'm like, did I hear that right? Dusty Rhodes, do they mean Dustin Rhodes? But it's just like, I know that Dustin's never won a world title, his dad was it, I'm thinking I vaguely remember, but at the same time, I'm like, is that real? And yes, when you look it up, he did actually do that. Now, let's talk about making history. Jessica Carr, she makes history tonight as she is the first woman to referee a WWE Championship match. And I love how Cole mentions that these two men are former Bullet Club members. Former Bullet Club leaders, I should say. You know, a lot of history made tonight. Especially with the one with uh, Jessica Carr. I, I, I like her. I, I love her. I actually love her. I think she's great. And really nice to the, like, really pleasing to the eye. She's a very beautiful girl. And she really is someone who's just 
amazing when it comes to how she referees. And I've seen her in main events, and I've seen her in you know matches where I'm going, wow, good for her. She's there. She's she's they, they trust her that much that they're gonna put her in that position. You know, I think people sleep on Jessica Carr. They don't. They probably don't. No one's ever said how how you know how good of a referee she is. You know, you see her, and also the fact that they do they realize don't they realize that she's been in some high caliber matches and some high you know the this you know just the matches are just like it's all the talk of the news and all that stuff you know major you know news on these matches right people are looking at it all eyes are on these matches and then there she is she's the referee you know so good on her now like i said before if anyone any fool out there doubt that Triple H is in charge, well, that right there should change your mind. BKM would never allow it. And I'm talking about the mention of Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles individually at points in their career in, in New Japan. They were the leaders of the Bullet Club. Now, let's start with the match. And Cody slapped Styles. Remember what happened to him? And AJ just walked out the ring at, at SmackDown. And then he does a cartwheel. And he does the Stardust hand gesture. Like I said, a little callback to what Styles did to him on SmackDown. Now, this match is very physical. And Styles was focusing on Cody's injured shoulder that happened in a previous match. And then he manages to hurt his back, which becomes a focal point of his attack. Now, he he goes off the top rope at one point, does AJ, and he nails a springboard 450 splash. He nails it, but Cody kicks out. Then AJ hits a burning hammer, nails it. Very well delivered. I think it's one of the best burning hammers I've seen. And I'm not saying that, you know, like, Trent Seven, and, and then I think New Catch Republic does that too as a finishing move. But I liked it. I like how he just executed it. And it just hit impact behind it, you know. But then Cody kicks out, you know. And immediately he kicks out. And then he connects with a Cody cutter. But Styles kicks out. Now, the moment perhaps that Cody felt he had the match won is that he attempted to hit the crossroads. But AJ counters, however, and he hits a Pele kick. Now, we get to a point where Styles goes for a phenomenal forearm and is met with a super kick by Cody Rhodes. Now, Cody cinches in a Kimura lock on Styles. And will Styles tap out to the champ? And do you remember when Cody Rhodes, when his arm was broken by Brock Lesnar with that move? Hmm? Well, we know that it wasn't really broken. That was one of those things where he would come out with a the, with the slaying arm and then he's able to do a Cody cutter and all these other things. And we're just going, come on, Cody. Stop trying to be... Tell the guys in the back to stop making you look like Superman because you're not. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. That's what a lot of people were thinking. And then what a move off the top rope. A definite Cody Cutter is delivered by Cody. It's like you see uh, Styles' head buried into the mat pretty much like a pile driver. I mean, and he follows that up with a crossroads because... If he doesn't follow up at the crossroads and doesn't get the win, then what was the point of that damn definite, you know, final, you know, Cody Cutter? And he hits the crossroads and he does win. He retains. A very, very good match. Very, very physical. I love the fact that these guys can tell a story in that ring. And Cody's not going to go wrong with uh, AJ as his uh, dance partner, if you will. A very, very, just, I just love the match. It was well done. And people doubt that Cody is the uh, the future right now. I don't know what you're coming, where you're coming from. Now let's, uh, before I continue with the minute, let's, let's talk about the crowd. Now, towards the end, I was getting annoyed. And I was about done with this France crowd. It was great, but like, when you eat chocolate all the time, eventually you get sick of it. It's like 
they were, you know, and I, and I will give them their due. It's an amazing, raucous crowd, but it's like, it just seemed like they were doing it at a right level, at a right tempo, and it was just perfect. And then these people just started going overboard because it's like, oh my God, let's just amp it up more. Let's do it like this. And it's just like, it just started getting annoying. But like I said, I still appreciate what they did, but it's just like, enough, you know, bring it down just a little bit, just a tad. I'm not saying don't be raucous, but man, it's like at one point, they just kept, it's like to the point where it was just like, come on already, man, you know. But like I said, I'm sure that if I was there, I would have been digging it. I would have been yelling as loud as they were. But when you're on TV, when you're watching it from home, and it's just constantly blaring into your ears, it's like someone getting a speaker with a loud music and putting it to your ear, you know, and you're like, and you can't do nothing about it because you're right here, and they're doing that like this and stuff like that, and it's just like it's, it, it gets to a point like like repetitive noise, right? It just it just starts getting to you. You can appreciate it, like I appreciated the crowd, but it was getting to the point where it's like going, okay, come on, stop already. It's getting to the point where it's very, very annoying, and it's going to get there. Not yet, not right quite there, but it's about to hit that level. You know, if it went another hour, I probably would have tapped out. But it only went like, what, two hours and 45 minutes? A good, good run for a pay-per-view. That's what Triple H's influence right there. You're not going to, you know, focus on, oh, let's get everybody on the car. We're going to get 14 matches. This had five matches, four title matches, one regular match, a street fight. I don't know if I call it a regular match, but what I mean, no title was on the line between the Bloodline and KO and Orton. But this pay-per-view was good. It was good. Was it the best pay-per-view they've ever put on? No. I don't think it's even the best um, wrestling that I've watched this week. You know, for me, the best thing that I saw this week was AEW Dynamite, surprisingly, because they've been shitting the bed in recent weeks. You know, and I can't make a, a comparison with everything, you know, because I don't watch NXT. I don't watch, you know, TNA. I don't watch Collision, Rampage. I don't watch Main Event. I don't watch anything. So, so, so something's. They probably could have had a good match or something that would have been like, okay, I'll, I picked that show. But the ones I watch, out of all the ones I watched, I definitely pick Dynamite. But Backlash was good. Very, very good match. Match. Very good pay-per-view. It really, really did a lot to just, you know, kind of, I don't know if somebody's rivalries are over and done with. Like Bianca wanted to be win that title, the tag titles, and be over and done with uh, Damage Control. Does it look like that? I mean, Damage Control is on Raw, right? So I'm sure it's done now. Remember that Kyrie Sane and Oscar are not the tag champions, so they're not going to go over to SmackDown, right? They're not going to go over to SmackDown, so. Who's to say, right? And all these other things. Like Tonga Loa arriving. Debuting on uh, Backlash. Is Jacob Bot 2 on his way yet? You know? What does that do? What kind of wrinkle does that, you know, throw in there into the bloodline? And Robin Reigns, he's still gone. There's still, you know... Ta yeah, what you call it? Solo Sokoa is building his bloodline. Now he's added Tama Tonga's brother, Tongaloa. And is Jacob Patu going to join them? I even hear that um, the Zilla Patu is also on his way, or maybe even signed. So this bloodline thing is going to continue going on. I don't mind it. If they do it like this, it's going to be worth walking, watching. You know? And the people that they're bringing over fit. I like seeing... I love seeing Tama Tonga and now his brother now in the bloodline. But like I said, is Tonga Loa just here 
or a what do you call it? Or a, you know, or a cup of coffee and a, a donut, you know, so to speak. What about uh, Hikaleo, yeah, another brother of theirs? Is he on his way too? I mean, that Bloodline 2.0, that that new improved uh, Bloodline is gonna make the the previous one look like nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now. According to that, uh, you know, they had that, uh, what do you call it? That um, announcement they said that's going to happen during the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby. Well, I looked it up and uh, it's in regards to WrestleMania next year, right? And after weeks of speculation, WWE has finally announced WrestleMania 41 will be held in Las Vegas. It's only about four hours away from me. I can go. I'll see. Now, the company confirmed Allegiant Stadium as the host site for the event on Saturday, as well as announcing it will take place on April 19th to the 20th. That's like well into them, almost mid-April. Uh, Are they going to do a May WrestleMania pretty soon? I mean, you know, but they have fluctuated, gone up and down, up and down, up and down, you know. Before, I think the previous one was like the 11th of April. And then that broke the record of the of the longest ever into April from the 8th before, like, you know, the April 8th. 19th or 20th, that's almost like end of April. Like, you know, I get it, you know, it's by availability, I guess. Now, Allegiant Stadium has a capacity of 65,000 fans for football games. Now, we know that they always expand it for uh, wrestling events. You know, it depends on the size of the stage, you know, it's like, you know what I mean? And 65,000, they can put another, what, another five, ten, maybe 20,000 seats down below. So they can easily see themselves at about 80,000 plus, you know. Now, that right there is uh, good news. It's another opportunity for me to go to WrestleMania. You know, last year I did have tickets for uh, 39. It was in uh, Inglewood. It was in L.A. They say Hollywood, but it was in Inglewood, California. And that's not that... And that's only like... Mm, that's like I'm in Northern California, so that's in Southern California. That was about like an eight-hour drive. If I went by plane, it would have been quicker. But, you know, things happen and couldn't go. Fortunately, couldn't go. But this is a situation where, I'm, yeah, maybe I'm, I'm going to think about it. I might buy tickets and then see... Especially in regards to my health, you know, I got to be careful about that and traveling and all that stuff. So we'll see it. Talk to my doctors. We'll see what he thinks, you know, if I can travel. But, uh, you know, that was, like I said, that was not the news. I usually do a week in wrestling. But I will just leave it with this video and then I'll do that next week. There's no pay-per-view. There's no nothing going on next week. I got to check. Usually, sometimes I'm like... I'm like, oh, okay, I could relax, you know, just watch regular Raw, SmackDown, Dynamite, pay per view already. You know, I don't know, I don't know. The 25th is the uh, King of the Ring, Queen of the Ring. The 26th is uh, in, coming in May is um, Double or Nothing for AEW. So I have till then, <laughs> you know. But this pretty much is my uh, my uh, you know my review, my re my recap, my rundown, my thoughts. You know, talking about uh, WWE Backlash 2024, like I said, a very good uh, pay-per-view. Was there their best one, their greatest one? Not really. But it's, it was very watchable, and I enjoyed every match. There was no throwaway match. Everything meant something. And I like how it, things were culminated here, and we saw rivalries come to a head. We see new wrinkles thrown in there with uh, Tonga Loa. And stuff, the new champs when it comes to um, Jade and Bianca. And also we see the retaining of uh, the WWE Championship by Cody. Right? Bailey retains. What's the other championship? It's like, I was doing that the whole night. At one point, I forgot about the WWE Championship. I go, that's the fourth one. And what's the other tag? What's the title matches, right? The WWE Women's title. The uh, WWE Championship. 
the world heavyweight title. There you go. That's the one I didn't mention. The world heavyweight title. And then Priest retains. And of course, the tag team titles changed hands. That's the only one, right? Yeah, that's the only one. And that's the only one that really mattered because that's the one that everybody was expecting. Priest is still going to have a long run. Same with Bailey, and same with Cody. The Kabuki Warriors have had the title for a while, so it was time for them to drop it. And then Jade and Bianca, hopefully they bring some legitimacy to this um, division. But it's all about building up teams and not just putting random people together to break them apart later on. That never works, that has never worked, and it's really redundant when they do that. And hopefully it changes with Triple H. He's doing this thing right now. He has his blueprint that he's following and that he wants to do. So this is a matter of building that foundation and then building the, the, that house and, and you know, putting up for sale, if you will. Well, not, he's not going to put it up for sale, but you know what I mean. It's complete. The house is complete. But he's he has the blueprint. Now he has to lay the foundation and everything else that follows. But anyway, uh, that's my video. So for those of you who stopped by and checked this out, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And also, please don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Uh, click like. Please share. Comment. Whatever you want. I'm all for it. And also, please subscribe. I've seen a couple more subscriptions come in. And I am digging it. Thank you so much for those who have subscribed. I appreciate it. And also, uh, click the notification button. Find it. If you do, click all. I believe that's only on, the, on mobile phones. But whatever you do, please do that. That way you can be notified when I post up a video. And again, thank you so much for your support. And like I said, this is my video. So for those of you who stopped by, check it out. I appreciate it. And until next time, take care. And I will see you in my next video.